Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of Out and About. Well, the celebrations are continuing well into to my future now, and what a great day we had on Friday. And just before we get on to the day's episode, of episode 53, I'm just sipping a cup of tea while I'm talking to you viewers out there. So, the news just got better on Friday. And as, as Mark Depp said, on Friday, it had all paid off. And joining me now, as the celebrations continue, here is the man himself. Here's Mark English, and welcome to episode 53. Good morning to you, Barry, on this glorious celebratory Monday, and welcome, viewers. Welcome to the continued celebrations. Obviously, Barry's still very excited about the news that he got on Friday, which is, well, it's exactly what you wanted, really. Maybe not the time frames, but absolutely everything that you wanted to happen is going to happen so your patience as you say has paid off so we've covered like being polite not being so polite on the show but we're going to be putting together a collage of videos that we have done for you viewers over the time that i'm being I actually put the first lot of videos together yesterday and selected some from from the early days when I arrived up until now. We've even got some in Indrapilly and Time Zone again. So, so pretty good. So here's Mark to tell you about that. Well, it's going to be a mammoth job uh, cutting out bits and pieces from the whole series and then putting them into a collage. So I'm greatly looking forward to seeing it, but I'm also looking forward to seeing the process. As I've said before, uh, confirmed Luddite, and this is all brand new stuff for me and I'm keen to see Barry, Barry do some editing. So, looking forward to it. So, so, we won't cover how to be polite and how not to be polite, because we've done them back. But one thing we will cover on and touch on, guys, is being respectful to people when they are trying to explain things to you is Mark. Yes, and I think in the context of, that you're saying this, Barry, it's about not just letting people start and having input, but letting people finish. And that means sometimes if there's a small lull in the conversation, it's not necessarily time to cut them off. Sometimes they're just taking a breath. And sometimes people like to think about what's coming out of their mouth next. So it is about letting people finish their sentence slash uh, point. So, you know, not cutting them off early as well as allowing them the time to so don't be rude, guys, and think it's about yourself because there are other people around as well. Here's Mark. Yeah, so we all, when we're interacting, like to think that we're being listened to, but sometimes that requires an acknowledgement that people have accepted it what you've said is valid and 
rather than just immediately talk over the top of it so that people don't feel as though their opinion is completely uh, a waste of everybody else's time. So we know that sometimes, guys, it can be frustrating, but please do remember as we are putting episode 53 together today and episode 54 tomorrow. Don't just think about yourself. Think about your words wisely. Okay, and as we said on Friday, don't keep apologizing for multiple behavior all the time. Here's Mark. I'm not sure. I think I need a bit of an explanation about what you mean about don't keep apologizing for multiple behavior. But multiple means when you rude, keep being rude and abrupt. Okay, so when you continually interrupt and take over the conversation. Yeah, that's right. So, so the important thing, guys, is you've got to remember that you are not the only one. That needs help with organising things, okay, which we'll talk about later in the day on the show, and how, and how to organise things properly. Now, being civil, as Mark and I said, is the only way to go, because if you're patient, if you're patient guys, you will get response that you that you require okay and that, and that what you need now if you let people do the, the job okay be, and you be civil about it then things will be done for you but if you keep hassling them, okay, it's not worth the work. Here's Mark now. Yes, I think I'm following now. And uh, it's extremely difficult when you're dealing with a serial offender, somebody who just tends to either continually talk over you or continually interrupt or continually not recognize what you're saying um, without reasonable explanation so under those circumstances you are perfectly entitled to say excuse me do i need to say something a different way you don't seem to understand what i'm saying so and often people uh, do need things explained to them in multiple ways to understand it to the same extent that you do while you're trying to put your message across. So don't expect that people are going to initially understand what your meaning is. Uh, we do tend to fill in a lot of blanks for our own mind and when you're trying to explain it to someone else, it can be extremely difficult. So don't, and don't be sarcastic about it, okay? We know that it is a frustrating time, but, but like we say on many of, like we said, on many of the videos we brought to you, okay, don't keep interrupting people. Let, then finish their sentence and wait until the sentence is that complete. Here's Mark. Yes, these are common courtesies that we don't speak over each other, that once someone is speaking, that we listen. And uh, if we have something to add, wait until the appropriate time. So, in other words, when they finish whatever it is that they want to say. It is also important to remain 
calm and civil if you are, are finding yourself upset, getting upset because sometimes guys, you know, you've got to expect bad news. I mean, you may be looking forward to this or that, but people have their reasons to say why this is being cancelled and no longer happening in Mark. Yes, there are a lot of factors that go into achieving outcomes and if your only focus is your outcome all the time, uh, on your terms only, then you are in for a life of disappointment. And nothing good is going to come out of it. There is a, a full-on future of compromise ahead of us all, where it'd be great, and sure, there are certain circumstances where you are paying for things, etc., where you can demand to have it done exactly the way you want it done. But most things in our life are compromises or uh, you know, require tweaking to what we think we're going to do or want. So like on Friday, like, um, like I had a big meeting with, um, with Anita and, 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 and then spoke to a couple of people and then got what I wanted in. and the the way I got what I wanted guys was by being civil and polite is Mark. Civil, polite and persistent. So if somebody initially says no, that often just means that there needs to be either a different way of looking at it or um, I suppose a slight variation to whatever the proposal was that got a negative response and uh, more conversation and as in Barry's case it was gone from a no to a yes and the only real compromise was a date. So everything that Barry wanted to happen is going to happen. It was just not exactly on the time frame that he wanted. So, today on this show, we're going to give you some examples of how things shouldn't be organised. Now, we're going to come to another shop to do this, so just a sec. Now, how to organise things. Okay, make sure you know where, what you're going to organise and how you're going to organise it and make sure that you've got the funding for it. Here's Mark now to open the second part of our show with this. Yes, so in this context, uh, you're specifically referring to you know, something that's funded by the NDIA and but as a general rule of thumb, it's everything that you've got to organise in your life. If you need to put a plan in place, then you think forward about the consequences of whatever it is that needs to happen and who needs to be involved and whether or not there's money involved, whether or not there's other people's time involved. There are all sorts of considerations to organising anything. And if you want to get it done your way, uh, you need to put absolutely clear and extensive plans in place to offer up to somebody else what it is that you're trying to do. And if you've got all of that, then you can make a proper plan based on 
when, where, how, how much, all those questions can be answered prior to actually acting on it. And, and, uh, and don't just organise things and think that you've got the money to pay for it because what if you have the NDIA? The NDIS, okay? They may tell you you haven't got enough funds to do it. Good luck. This absolutely comes into the planning part. Now, if you've reached the stage of finding out that you've got everything organised and there's no money, then clearly there was no planning because you cannot go ahead without the vital element uh, required to make it all happen. So if there's no money, then obviously the whole plan absolutely falls over. So this is just a, the concept of plan is to make sure that all of those things are well and truly considered before things are booked or promised or you know, even discussed. There's no point in talking about you know, doing a trip around the world on the QE2 if you simply can't do it. Because like, you may have to be stuck in, in your current place of where you live. Now even if you reviewed it in six months time, okay, example, okay. Again, the NDIA may, may say, well, I'm sorry, you still haven't got enough money, the money for, for our house here or there. Here's Mark. They're more logistical issues that I would say are very specific to the circumstances of dealing with the NDIA and um but it doesn't change the whole aspect of planning so the mysteries that are the ndia slash ndis uh, models and how they actually work that's part of the planning so just going back over okay ladies and gentlemen do not argue with people on the phone, okay? And, and say, well, give me the money because the NDIA is not a bank. It's mark. Yes. Um, not liking the result is something that we've talked about in the past and... It's simply a matter of going back and rediscussing what it is that you want to do, how to go about it, why the answer was no, what needs to change for the answer to be yes. So it comes back to every single time, it comes back to communication. Okay, because, like, you know, in my case, I was civil. I waited for the NDIS to give me a result. Let's go back to my episode 52 on the on the phone call. Now I was very polite and very civil on on that occasion. Is Mark? Yes, you were. It, episode 52 is when you got the result that you wanted. It's a sterling example of you know, the end result of persistence, civility, communicating. But in the context of the, the discussion, it was all positive, episode 52 meeting. So it might be more interesting to look at one well before when the answer was no and how did you react then 
So we so let's go back to one particular episode where I thought I had the news. Now you remember on episode twenty when Mark was here with me in the studio? Okay, and we we I thought I had the good news and I didn't. Well. It was very disappointing back at that time. But now, it is time for me to look towards the future. Not putting it in reverse and going all the way back to where I was disappointed. Because that is not the way to go. Here is Mark. Yes, and as I recall, that was simply a matter of miscommunication because I don't think at the time it was explained to you clearly that they couldn't say anything until you'd had another assessment. That is their requirement and no getting around it. It had to be done prior to any decision being made. But of course, it delayed any decision being made by some time. So, yes, it's a negative, but it was also, I suppose, an absolutely unavoidable circumstance where their rules and regulations simply don't allow them to just go, yeah, to everything. So, quite reasonably, uh, if you're talking about costing them more money, they want to see why it's going to cost them more money and whether that's reasonable under the circumstances. So once the process had run its course, then you got the good news. And that was because I was patient and thought, okay, and I will pause that. Excuse me. It might be. Welcome back. As we were saying, it, it is very important to um, let people do their job and not and not talk over them and not tell them, go around telling people lies that you were being improved for this or that when you haven't. Here's Mark. Oh, I think I think a lot of that again is miscommunication and uh, you might be running around telling people that you've been approved because you think you have but you haven't well again that's just a misunderstanding a miscommunication and it can only be sorted out by people sorting out that miscommunication but, um, as I would say, don't lie to people about, about it is what I'm referring to as well. So, so that is the end of the examples. Okay, we're going to continue our show today at that point and we're going to give you a brief history on the show. Um, episode 53 will be continuing at, at that point with I don't need to tell you. So thanks for joining us and, and joining us on our celebration. Here's Mark to close the second part of our show with this. Thank you. Well, stay with us. We're off to Strathpine. Not sure what we're going to be doing just yet, but I'm sure it'll be something very exciting. So stay with us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you shortly. So Bruce is coming up next with his trusty taxi. And stay with us. 
You're watching episode 53 of Out and About with Emily and Bea. Stay with us. It's Monday, the 14th of November. Well, look, here we are now outside our studio, ready to go. We just completed um, part one and two of our video today. Here's Mark now. Yeah, well, we're just waiting for Bruce, our taxi driver, to arrive. And uh, it's lovely and warm out here, but... But remember, sleep slopping and slap, guys. Yep, yeah, exactly right. So we do have to be careful about sunburn. So uh, we've got the Factor 50 and hats and glasses, sunglasses. So all the protective gear that we need. So... So, as I said on Friday, my shows will be coming to an end, but quite soon, actually. Here's Mark. Yes, well, Barry's been given the absolutely fantastic news that he is going to be moving back to New South Wales, and it's going to be happening in the new year, and obviously it just needs to be organised now. But it does mean that he'll be leaving us for the uh, less than ideal climates of the northern beaches of Sydney. And he's going to be leaving Bray Park behind. And I might be able to see my brother for Christmas also. Here's Mark. Well, that was one of the mitigating factors for you wanting to move back so quickly was homesickness and you know becoming isolated from your family and your friends that are all down in New South Wales so very nice that you'll be able to go back and catch up with your friends and family so we'll just take a quick shot around the, the, the van now land our van there Sitting idle at the moment. There, there she is. In all her glory. In all her glory. 3 by 3 E H time in our number. So, so we're going to take a break now and come back to you at that point. Here's Mark. Yep, we'll be back shortly. Uh, take care, and we look forward to you continuing to tune in. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Strap Point Shopping Centre. I'm Barry Fair, and thank you for joining us here on this Monday morning. I'm 29 minutes to midday here. And what, what a steamy Monday it is. Well, today on the show, we're going to talk about the history of my, my videos and album about a game. Now, some of the places we've been to so far on album about is here at Strap Point, which is where we are now. We've been to Scarborough, we've been everywhere. And here now is Mark English to open our third part of our Monday episode and episode 52 53 with that. Here he is. Good morning once again. Welcome to everyone and thank you for tuning in. So we're going back through the history of Out and About and uh, as Barry said we've been quite a few places and here we are in Strathpine. As you know we've been here before so uh, 
we're about to cover off on, on some history for you, so stay tuned. So sit back and relax and grab a cold drink, guys, and listen and tune in to what Mark and I have to say. So the history on the album and belt, we've already covered some of it, but some places um, we've covered, like Slap Pine and Scarborough and in Philly. Okay, since I've got the news about Sydney, which we'll talk about also today on the show, we'll continue. Let's go back to where it all began. Well, on Monday, May 30th at 10 a.m., this man here, Mark, made, well, made his second appearance with me on the video. Now, the original episode was on the story bridge and what an overcast day it was there. It was also coming into winter too at that time when we began out in the back. Here's Mark to, uh, to begin the history with that. Thanks, Barry. Yes, it was a dismal May day. Uh, you know, not completely unheard of for that time of year, but uh, it was cool, overcast, and eventually rainy. So, which it saved for us, you know, getting onto the bridge itself. Uh, before it decided to rain, but that was how it all kicked off on day one, and we've gone from strength to strength since then. So we've had to miss a few episodes as well due to COVID. Now, episode 21, right? I've mentioned a couple of times. Boy, that was a disaster. And I was even not well before we brought episode 21 to you. Here's Mark now. Yes, unbeknownst to me, Barry was struggling when I arrived uh, for our 10 o'clock start. And then as we spent the day at Scarborough, he just went downhill badly. So by the time we finished the day, uh, completely spent and uh, had his COVID test when we got home, which of course was positive. So, so we regret ha not ha having cancelled Monday that day. And I was in my room for 12 whole days not being able to do anything which was even worse. Now my COVID didn't finish until Sunday the 26th of June. Now don't be surprised if I can remember some back so far. So that was episode 21. Now we also had lunch at the Morgan Seafood then then as well. Here's Mark to tell you about it. Yes, we had lunch at Morgan's and we were we did a, a bit of a review, but uh, by the time the end of lunch had come around, you were already not yourself and uh, I think we might have cut it a bit short that first day because I remember your second review there was much more enthusiastic. And it was, and we had a lovely lunch there. And we also introduced some privacy rules too. Here's Mark. Yes, well it was just about the uh, not mentioning names in a public forum. So that whatever, I suppose, 
incident or behaviour or occurrence we were talking about couldn't be identified. So you've just got to be mindful not to give away people's identities, addresses or any other important facts about them uh, when you're on a public forum. So, so what was that was when we said now, going back to episode 29, uh, which was on the, um, the 20th, which was on the 18th of July, we went to New Farm, New Farm Park and did a show there with Mark. We've done two very nice shows from New Farm Park. We've been very lucky. The weather's been kind to us and the park does have very easy access and uh, excellent paths to get around. So you really, once you're inside the park itself, you've got the run of the whole park, haven't you, Barry? You have, yeah. So it's a fantastic destination for anyone restricted by wheelchairs. It has loads of space, excellent paths, uh, a selection of transport uh, systems that can get you to or from, and you know once you're there, it's an absolutely beautiful place. And we, we all, I also did an episode there with, with my account staff, or two episodes there. And that was back in in May, uh, and and then we came across this little cafe called the End of the Road Cafe, which is where we got picked up. And strangely enough, I, okay, this rude person had a go of Mark on the phone after we concluded our, 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 our show at New Farm. But that was on the last one, but before that, beautiful day, sun was shining, 22 degrees, I knew it from starting to blow a mark. Here's Mark. Yes, it was a gorgeous day actually. And as you say, 22 degrees, which is just a little bit cool for me. I do like it warmer, but it was a gorgeous day. And we haven't really had any warm days since we started until now. So today is the first really steamy day that we've had. Uh, uh, no, it's not, because remember, back on episode 40, 45, it was steamy out here, and we did the bowling, remember? Oh, that's right. Well, they're steamy and they're steamy. I, I would have said that today, yes, it's steamy. So, so, let's uh, also tell you why, tell you about getting organized for an now. Now, be ready for your person, make sure you got it. Everything prepared and you transport organized, which is what Mark and I generally do. So as soon as we do get everything ready, right, we do the intro and then we're out the door. Bruce is here, Bruce is here, Bruce is there, I should say. So, like this morning he rang up and we said we're off to that point there and here we are doing the show with you. 
So another exciting job we've got is the Brisbane Botanic Gardens. Now, having a look, look back on episode 49, and again, a beautiful day there. It was almost like time I had come early. Here's Mark. Yeah, we've had some very nice uh, sunny clear days and the weather's generally been very kind to us because considering what a wet year it's been, we haven't had too many of our days rained out at all. But one of the days were and that was Melbourne Cup where we couldn't get a taxi. That was just Unfortunately predictable that day, but uh, I'm not much of a race going and I made no consideration for it being Melbourne Cup Day and as a consequence of that, of course I should have realised there would not be many taxis available, but as it panned out, we were only a bit late getting back to the house. We didn't even go. <laughs> we were in the studio. That's right. So, so there I will be, and we've even done, started to do some shows in the studio, like take the last week when we had a beautiful a day of corking and all of that when we made the beautiful sausage rolls in March. It's a nice way to spend the day, actually. A little bit of you know, cooking for the camera, and then you know, it serves many purposes. One, I get to experiment with my sausage roll recipe. Two, I get to feed you lunch. And three, we put some away for future meals. So, all round, it's a, a great way to spend a, a few hours of the day, isn't it? A great way, and another day, we did episode 40, 40 at New Farm Park again, and then, and then 12 episodes later, well, Thirteen episodes right up here we are. Here's Mark. It just seems to keep adding up. The uh, the time flies by. I don't even realise that I can't believe we've had enough time to make this many shows as it is. And a lot of people just think about how much or how far I should say I'm, I'm gone with this show. Here's Mark. Well, it started out as letting people know what you were up to, but not necessarily with any particular focus. Whereas I think once you started out and about, it did become more about where you could go, where you had proper access, proper facilities, how easy it was for you to get around or not. So it became more informative and hopefully useful to people when it comes to particularly getting around and finding things to do that they enjoy, that they can get access to. And also we, we, we have, however, our tower line we bring to the Brisbane Botanic Gardens again. Here's Mark. Yes, they, well they were sort of very central and the first time we went we did more of the gardens and then the second time we went we... We did the Goodwill Bridge. Yes, we went around the outside edge of the gardens and then across the Goodwill Bridge. So obviously connecting South Bank to the northern side of the river which is at the Botanic Gardens at Gardens Point. So 
good comment a lot of jokes and and just think how many episodes we've covered so so uh, this is episode 53 now like I've said here's mine and the numbers get bigger all the time so we've still got quite a few months until you will head back to Sydney now and knowing that we can plan to keep moving forward with a few more shows I'm sure we'll get some more in between now and then which uh, and we're getting cut to another shop now and just going back over my good news so uh, Stay, stay where you are, people. We'll be back in a sec. Two weeks ago, before we, we brought Adam and Bout to you, I received some very good news. Here's Mark to tell you about it. We got the all important call from Derek or email from Derek whichever came first, to say that your funding had been approved for your move back to Sydney, which is what you had apparently been waiting for for months. It finally came through and it's now absolutely confirmed and locked in stone that you'll be moving back to Cromer in Sydney and it's now just a matter of when and how. So the organisation for that trip has started and obviously it's not just you, it's all your things, so a complete move needs to be organised and that isn't going to happen overnight. So it will take a little while before you do make the actual transition down the side. So, let's go back over over we know that we covered this but for those that some of you not all of you may have subscribed to the, the my channel or watch the show but it is very important when you get those phone calls or emails expect some not not so good news not such good news I should say did Mark to tell you about it well I'm not sure what you mean about don't expect good news well don't expect to hear good news all the time no fair enough uh, is that is what I'm referring to yes so you're never quite sure what sort of news you're going to get, good, right. bad or indifferent. But be prepared for it. Yeah, well, just be prepared to accept what news you get. And if it's good, fantastic. If it's not good, can you change it? How do you go about changing it? And, you know... <laughs> What people tell you sometimes is bad news is not necessarily bad news, it's just not to their exacting standards of time, etc. So, you know, they might get the positive news that something's happening, but it might be a week later than they want it, so it's all disastrous. But the reality is, you know, whatever your news is, uh, you just have to measure it against what your expectation was and then whether your expectation was even remotely achievable or not. And I got a pleasant surprise when I got that news from Derek. Well, it was actually one Friday morning that, that I got the news from Derek and, and I thought, wow, this is excellent. I was almost out of my chair when I heard that. I was almost ready to hit the ceiling back at our studio. And 
I'm, I'm winning, and, uh, and I deserve to be happy now. Here's my. Well, you put a lot of effort into communicating what you wanted and being persistent without being rude. So when you finally got the news that uh, the trip was approved, obviously you were very excited to finally get positive news on that particular front. Not like on the on um, episode 19 where I thought I had, and then again on the 20th. So again, like Mark said, it was a miscommunication, and like that Roy Alberton song, communication breakdown. Here's Mark. There was a communication breakdown. Mainly in the understanding of partly what the process was and that whilst on one hand you've got someone saying yes, they're saying yes, I can progress this to stage one, which is getting someone organised to come and see you, to do an assessment, to write a report, to send me the report so that I can actually apply for what you've asked me for all of which was not considered in your initial discussion with him, but slowed the process down by literally months. And, you know, when you found out that what you thought was happening wasn't happening, uh, you were very disappointed, but what you wanted to happen was still in the works. And then finally, finally, after all, all the approval, I okay, my disappointment and anger, okay, it went from being frustrated and angry, okay, to very happy. So that's why I, I was almost over the moon and almost ready to pack, but I, as you know, I can't automatically do that. So that's why the celebrations are continuing, um, continuing, and that Friday I came here to celebrate. And to thank a few people, and speaking of thanking people, okay, I wrote a very nice email on to someone on the weekend thanking them, or two people actually, for what they've done. So, so, so I'm being very busy on the Saturday writing emails, thanking people for their time, what they've done, and thank them. So here's Mark. Just following on with the courteous theme, that in the process of achieving what you wanted, you need somebody else's help, uh, whether that was just to push along others, or to drive uh, any particular aspect of getting things organised and it is courteous just to say thank you for a job well done. Because people went out of their way to help me achieve what I want. Because if I hadn't and said thank you guys, it's just this like a pie in the eye. Here's Mark. It's something that people should have wanted to do for you anyway, uh, without thanks. But again, it's just what we call common courtesy. It's just simply a social construct of expectation. And if you understand that it's just an expectation by social construct, and you choose not to do it, then you choose to accept the consequences of people thinking you to be rude. Uh, but it comes back to your choice. 
indulge in the social construct or do not. But don't be surprised by people's reaction. Well, I chose the language version because it's a way of showing respect to us. He is not. Yep. It, as I said, it's just a socially acceptable construct. Socially acceptable means the majority of people have a thought process that means that that is how things should be done. Well, we've come to the end of our show, our original show, but um, do stay around because we've got the food review coming up. It's coming up to midday here. It's Monday the 14th of November. Okay, so, so um, thank you everybody for joining us here on the, the third part of our show. So the show is not over yet, but before we go, here, Friday phone call was absolutely delicious to wait. Here's Mark. Sorry, I thought you said Friday's phone call was delicious to eat. Well, Friday's phone call was a delight to listen to, not, not to wait. You don't eat phone call. <laughs> Just joking. Yes, so you were very excited about Friday's phone call, justifiably. As we've covered off, there were months of work and expectation in getting that phone call. So anyone that understands if you've been putting months of effort into achieving an outcome and it finally comes, I think everybody understands how happy you should have been. And I should be happy. And I deserve to be happy. And I deserve to sleep well at night. And it was really great. So having that meeting on Friday was really sensational. The added bonus, okay, you know, was, um, was, um, I might be going home for, for Christmas to see my family, but we we'll see what happens here tonight. Yes, there, there were two things on the table. One was a permanent move and one was a visit. Uh, for the meantime, not sure how easy it's going to be to organise a visit for December from now. It seems that time is the big issue for everyone in trying to get these things organised. So the move back to Cromer, the permanent move back to Cromer is written in stone now. It's I don't understand what written in stone means. It means that it can't be changed. So if it's written in stone, there's no no way to correct it, no way to change it. It has to be what it is. And you've been told that you will be moving, that the accommodation's organised, and now it's just a matter of how and when. How and when? Yes, but not. we're not waiting to find out if it's going to happen. That was the broad brush stroke at the start where you didn't even know if you were going to move. But now that you do know for sure that you're moving, we only have to worry about when and how. So, I think I'm going to be flying, flying back this time. It'll be a much quicker way than any other option. So, guys, we'd like to close this show by saying what the third part of our show might say, thanks for being 
brother. The show is not over yet. We've got a good review coming up next. And here's Mark to tell you about it. So I'm assuming that we're, we've hit the lunch bell. It's time. It's time to eat. And we'll be back to you shortly. And we've come to the end of our, uh, the end of the show. But before we close it, the number that we rely on 24 hours a day, and you know what it is. It's a community actor, and now we always bring up, and that is triple zero. Please do not abuse that, because it is the wrong thing to do. Here's Mark now to close the show, the show with that. Thanks, Barry. Absolutely correct. It's a an emergency number. The emergency bit should give it away. If you do not have an emergency, please don't use it. It's vital for the function that they're not distracted by people who don't have an emergency. Because if you put someone's life at risk and you mark around triple zero, you could put myself or Mark at risk. Here's Mark to tell you about it. It's very dangerous because it does create issues for them when they're trying to do their job. So all I can say is, please don't do it. And if it's not broken, guys, don't fix it. Because trouble our operators, they can send the boys around to where you live. Here's Mark. There, there are all sorts of penalties for misusing it. That's not the point. The point is that it endangers other people's lives. It's rude. It's inconsiderate. It distracts people from their real job. And again, just don't do it. And it's the same with, with don't litter the shopping centre. Simple, guys. Please do not do it. We know that we bang on about this, but if we don't get the message out to you, then, then somebody is going to say, do something really stupid with triple zero, like put my life a bit in my mouth. I've got any things to say, perhaps. Sorry. That's alright. But now let's go and enjoy some soil origin and I uh, let me get my bar coming. Of course then. Is my is right, it is. And so we'd like to say thanks guys for tuning in. The lunch break is up next. Here it is. I'm looking forward to lunch. See you soon. And and we might even do a review on the can I the the the, the usual suspect the soil origin chicken zips, nitty panea as I call it, is mine. It does tend to become a favourite of yours, so I'm expecting that that's what it's going to be again today. And, and, and you and have your chicken snitty panini and I have my roast pork sandwich. We're both very happy campers. And we'll bring you a review on that straight up at the lunch break. So the show is not over yet. Still plenty more to come. Well good afternoon again. Here we are in the food court. 
from here with what we've got today. So, there's Barry's chicken schnitzel panini. How it looks before I attack it. Chop it into tiny little bits. And, well, I have to admit, my roast pork sandwich and the chippies, which I better give Barry a look at, and a fork, and look at that. Oh yeah, of course, there's always the trap chip. That it does. So I'm going to take this opportunity to cut up your panini, Barry, so you can enjoy it. And we'll be back with you shortly. And I think the chips get a thumbs up. Okay, this is what you are left well, it appears that yet another successful uh, sandwich for Soul Origin. So Barry's very keen on those chicken schnitzel paninis. Has no trouble hoovering the lot. Not to mention a few chippies. And we might even do... Do some more chippies. Uh, and we might even tomorrow do our home book version of this classic. Excellent. That gives us a plan. Well, here we are now at the cab rank outside the Sapphine Shopping and a usual. Now of people streaming in and out of the shopping centre. And, and what an exciting day we've had today, Mark. Absolutely, Barry. It's always you know, good to start the day in a good mood, isn't it? That it sure is. And We'd like to win today's Sapphine Extravaganza by saying, please be polite and friendly, especially with the, the cab drivers because they do a wonderful job. And here's Mark. Well, I think you, you just into being happy and friendly with everyone, Barry and it's not a bad way to be. It tends to get you uh, a lot more favour than being surly. And being surly, guys, it is not the way to go, so don't act like it. And just to finish off, off as usual, the $1 promo code for Pepsi, from the KFC, so it's good. It's good to wet the whistle with some cordial and a frozen coke. Here's Mark. Well, it's not uh, not winning any health recommendations, but it's certainly beautiful when it's hot and you're thirsty. So whatever will do in a pinch. Yet so um, today, guys, we'd like to win and, and on being really polite and friendly. We will discuss this uh, when we're back 
a bright car and like I said as you look okay with triple zero please do not ring that number unless you've got an emergency here's Mark to close our strap line visit with that I know it's something we talk about very regularly but it is a very important topic and it's very important that people don't abuse the triple zero number because it is something that relies on people being on the ball and getting services to you as quickly as they can. So we will see you back at the studio guys and we will tell you what's coming up tomorrow. I'm back at the studio. Thanks for joining us here on episode 53 today. And the show is far from over. We've got, still got plenty more to cover on today's show. So here's Mark to tell you what's coming, well, what is still to come on this edition of Out and About. Well, on this edition, we've still got to get home and do our studio clothes, where no doubt we'll be telling everyone about tomorrow's plan, which is, at this point, a day in and some more cooking. And so we've decided that we're going to try and do a bit of copying and emulate Barry's favourite lunch, which is the chicken schnitzel panini. Yeah, so don't waste $11. 50 guys, grab some chicken breast, some lettuce and tomato guys, and some bread roll, and, and, and really get cooking and you'll have lunch on the table within no time at all. So we will tell you about that about tomorrow's plan on tomorrow's show too. Celebration Dark continuing. And we will also recap on that. So see you back at Sapphire. Guys, stay tuned. See you back there. Bye for now. Bye for now. Well, here we are back at Bray Park, everyone, after a, a very successful day. And welcome along. I'm back to you viewers out there. And what a day we've had. It's Mark now. We've had a very busy day just getting out and about and amusing ourselves whilst at Strathpine and getting our food and just chatting to people in general. So we've had quite a lovely day of doing not too terribly much, but uh, all at a very nice pace. And tomorrow we've got an extravaganza coming up for you. We've got another cooking day here in the studio for you. And the carbon copy of the panay that I had today and instead and in well, well without, without treading on anybody's legal toes it's as close as we can copy it it's as close as we can copy it so uh, so a very uh, good a very good um uh, a very good session, <coughs> excuse me, a very good session coming up indeed, and episode 53 is now in its closing stages, and we're just, um, we're just um, doing some editing here because I've accidentally deleted one part of the show. 
But not to worry, it will be back up there soon. So, um, so guys, what a productive day it has been. Here's Mark. Yes, we have been busy. You've notched up quite a few uh, videos today. And, you know, the nice thing is we've got a solid plan for tomorrow as well, which is fantastic. And yeah, we know that we'll be cooking lunch. So that's one less thing we need to worry about. And I'm really looking forward to doing some more cooking. So it'll be good. So we look forward to your company then on that show. But before we do go, just a little bit of history. Um, and some news okay I've already shared it with you okay it is happy and sad the good news is I will be able to uh, continue the show until I move now a thing that Mark said um, on the show today and uh, the stepping stone is it can't be changed. Here he is to tell you about it. That's correct. It was actually carved in stone. And, you know, a very old saying, it just means that that will not be changed. So, uh, when I explained it to Barry, it was that because that was absolutely guaranteed now, the move to Sydney is guaranteed, that, that bit's written in stone and everything else is up for negotiation and planning because nothing else has been finalised except that it is definitely going ahead. So we look forward uh, to your company then on that show, on the next show. And before we do go, and leave you from episode 53 the number that we rely on 24 hours a day and you know what it is I don't need to keep repeating it is triple zero please do not call that number unless you have an emergency here's Mark for his closing message on this Thanks, Barry. Yes, it is something that we talk about routinely. It's a very important topic and it's a very important service. So given that we, as an entire nation, depend on triple zero nationally, obviously you know, we need to have those lines open for any emergencies that come through. And I can only imagine that if people particularly in light of what's going on with wild weather around the country of late, uh, need to get emergency services in a hurry. Uh, they need to know that triple zero is going to be available and ready to react as soon as they call. So we'd like to leave you now with that message and join us again tomorrow at 10 o'clock and then again on Friday for the, for the final of our Friday bollocks. And we may have something in store for you then. So we won't give the surprise away yet. We'll tell you on, on Friday what we've got. So we're off to push today's episode up now. Thanks for your company and we will see you on, yeah, tomorrow. Here's Mark for his farewell. Take care everyone and it's only a short wait back tomorrow as Barry said and we're greatly looking forward to you joining us again. So take care and be safe and enjoy life. Because that's what life is all about, guys. So do enjoy um, 
life instead of wasting it. And see you later, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye.